Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with tall tales and tantalizing truths. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a TV presenter whose knowledge of cars is second only to my own. My personal favorite is a red one. It's Richard Hammond. <laughs> And a comedian who once did a TV show for Channel 4 where he wrestled an alligator. Who says Sky TV has all the best sports? It's Sean Locke. <laughs> and over on Lee Max team tonight, someone who has helped transform British tennis and helped ruin British dancing. It's Judy Murray. <laughs> A South African comedian who recently performed on the Royal Variety Show. 90 minutes of the finest entertainment crammed into seven and a half hours. <laughs> it's Trevor Noah. <laughs> so let's begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panelists read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Trevor, you're first up tonight. I used to call strangers on the telephone and convince them that they were talking to Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> David's tea. Uh, wh why? <laughs> because everyone loves Nelson Mandela. But is, but is it... Pl I mean, how often did Nelson Mandela cold call people? <laughs> Were you selling anything as Nelson Mandela? No, <laughs> no, no, just... It wasn't, it wasn't pretending funny. to be Nelson Mandela during his tally sales period. Oh, right. <laughs> How did you start the conversation? So if I've answered the phone... Hello? Hello, Richard. <laughs> Whoa, it's Nelson Mandela! <laughs> what did you say next? How are you, Richard? <laughs> uh, I wanted to thank you. For fighting against bad things. <laughs> I'm not in top gear, have you? <laughs> <laughs> who, who did you target? Any, anybody. I just dialed uh, numbers on the phone. Well, ra ra <laughs> random, <laughs> random numbers. Yeah, like it was just you know. What, what was your what was your hit rate on that for people who believed it was Nelson Mandela and didn't? A hundred percent. Really. But everyone, how many did you try? Is it just Richard now? <laughs> it was, yeah, it was fairly convincing. Do you I... ever let the people know at the end? You go, ah, it's not Nelson no, Mandela. <laughs> no, no, because that would crush them. <laughs> how would you know when to end the conversation as Nelson Mandela with this unsuspecting, gullible, hopefully stranger? Well, they would think I'm Nelson Mandela, and then initially it's wow, and then then I guess the next thing becomes. Why are you calling? And then afterwards, then they start asking questions. Oh, what are you up to? And then you go, no. And what you are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> you're, not wearing you're not wearing that shirt again, are you, Nelson? <laughs> Sick of that shirt. But what if you'd called? Uh, what if you'd called an apartheid-friendly white Africana? Feel the tension <laughs> in the room. <laughs> yeah, just check, Rob. Have you done light entertainment before? <laughs> <laughs> you're calling me. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hello, who am I speaking to? You're talking to Tobias Cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> this is some of my best work. <laughs> we're, we're just glad it's someone else other than Ronnie Corbett for a change. <laughs> who is this that is talking to me? This is Nelson Mandela. What? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> Are you sure you're not Morgan Freeman? <laughs> that movie hasn't come out yet. <laughs> well, do you know what? I've always been pro-apartheid, but this frank exchange of views with you has really turned me the other way. <laughs> I wish you all the very best. And to you. <laughs> so what do you think? Could this be true? I think it's true. Do you think it's true? You, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking it's true as well, yeah. You so know. you're saying true? Oh, we're saying true. We're, saying we're true. definitely saying All true. All right, yeah. Trevor, truth or lie? True. <laughs> 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 yes, it's true. <laughs> Trevor did used to call people and pretend to be Nelson Mandela. Sean Locke, you're next. <laughs> While travelling around Europe, my friend and I came up with a scheme to make money on the beach. 
Beast team. What was it? It was um, it was jewellery. We used to sell jewellery. What was kind of jewellery was it? It was earrings. And where did you get the earrings from? Um. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, we'd make them. Oh, it's homemade jewellery. <laughs> Here we go. Um, wh where was the beach? Where, where was the beach? <laughs> Right next to the sea. <laughs> it was in Greece. What was it about being on that beach? You thought earrings. Um, <laughs> I couldn't make donuts. Okay. <laughs> what did you make the earrings out of? Well, I, I didn't make them. My, my friend made them. And what did he make them out of? <laughs> Beads. <laughs> Now, this friend, Sean, what was his name? <laughs> Spud. Spud. <laughs> Spud. Spud. Yeah, was his name. Spud the Jew. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my job was to sell them. Oh, ah, so them. you're the salesman, so, so give us a bit of pad. Imagine David is he's on the beach in his thong, he's relaxing. <laughs> Finally, he can be himself, okay? okay? And you come along and you look at his ears, they're unadorned, you think yeah. there's an opportunity. Off you go. Well, the first thing, if he's got a thong on, I'll ask him to turn over. <laughs> you can roll onto your back, please. <laughs> <laughs> and would you like me to rub a bit of cream into that area? Because I don't think that's ever seen the sunshine. <laughs> he wasn't the target market, yeah. isn't he? Well, Richard likes a bit of jewellery. You like, I like jewellery around the neck, so Mate. sell them to Richard. Are you having a nice time? Yeah, I'm having a lovely time. Do you want to buy some earrings? Not really, no. <laughs> What's right, wrong then. with me? <laughs> I've right. turned over and everything. <laughs> Why not do this? Spud! <laughs> Help! What was Spud's real name? Keith. Keith. <laughs> Why did you call him Spud? He always had a jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> What are you thinking? Judy, do we think that's truth or a lie? I think, I think it's a lie. You don't, I not... can't see him selling beaded earrings on a beach. Would you buy anything from him? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to go? I think, I think Judy's right. You think it's a lie? Yeah. I'm going to go with the team. Are you going to say lie? Sean, truth or lie? True! Oh. <laughs> yes, it's true. Sean did used to sell earrings on the beach. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Ben. <laughs> Uh, Richard, what is Ben to you? Uh, this is Ben, and I once convinced him that he'd been spooked by a ghost in a country house. <laughs> Sean, how do you know Ben? Well, this is Ben, and I had to talk to him for over an hour to keep him calm when he got trapped in a port -loo. <laughs> David, what's your relationship with Ben? Uh, this is Ben, and he very recently took me to my first ever football match. <laughs> and <laughs> and was disappointed that I nodded off for a bit in the second half. <laughs> Lee's team, where do you want to start? Well, first of all, Sean, how was he trapped in a portal? Well, it was it, the, the lock wouldn't work, wouldn't open. But why was why was it such a tense situation that you had to calm him down? Why is he panicking? Because Ben, and I saw you, you'll notice that. I mean, you just have to look at him to know he's, <laughs> he suffers from a lot of anxieties. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he looks so comfortable here, doesn't he? Just so relaxed under all these lights. <laughs> he's not. Inside, he's... <laughs> where, where, was, where was the port uh, On a campsite. Had you met him before? I'd seen him on the campsite. And he'd nodded. Hello. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, you know what it's like. You're walking across a campsite <clears throat> and you've got a toilet roll in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows, you know, where you're going. They sort of smile at you, so where you... <laughs> Like you've all, you've all, all been there. We've all been there. And you're walking across, and you've got a toilet roll, and people go, All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, weird, what weirdly. again? And then they've got that what again look without saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you go to use the port loop? No, I was going out of the campsite. And you heard, what did you hear? Well, uh, someone sort of 
struggling with the with the with the mechanism. Oh, no shouting at this point. If someone, you know, it's a matter of politeness. If someone's making sort of struggling noises <laughs> in a portaloo, <laughs> you don't think you can do much to help. <laughs> I like to think, yeah. and even if I could, I don't really want to get involved in that. <laughs> but as I was walking out, I thought, it still it looks like it was wobbling slightly. And I went back, I said, I said, are you all right? Oh. And he went, no, I'm not. <laughs> and you talked to him for, you said, an hour? Yes, yeah, we just... Well, I'm curious to know what you filled an hour with. <laughs> well, I just chatted, I said, I just chatted about how, how his camping weekend was going. <laughs> Not, not very well. <laughs> so you, you're, in the, you're in the thing with him, and eventually what happened? What was the outcome? Yeah, how did he get out? The guy came. The, uh, he the died camp, in The there. campsite manager. <laughs> and then when he came out, you obviously the first time you'd seen each other. Yeah. And how was that? Did you fall in love? <laughs> no, I, to be honest with you, I think, I think he was a bit disappointed. <laughs> it was like a blind date. Who else would you like to quiz, Lee? Uh, Richard, could you remind us again, please, of your... Um, I once persuaded Ben that he'd been spooked by a ghost in a country house. And, and what was the story? How did you convince him? Well, um, he was in a separate room and um, I saw, like, a, a stool and realised, hang on, I can hit the rafters knowing where he was. That'll sound like footsteps coming towards him. So I did. And it, it, he believed it was a ghost. Yeah, no, no, what were you doing in this house? What, is this just like an empty house where people are? No, we worked together in radio. Yeah. Uh, and we were doing a, a ghost hunt. Why was why was Ben in the room by himself? Because he just wanted to be brave and go off, and he'd sat in the scariest, supposedly most haunted room in the house, which happened to be directly above where I was in the hall. And how how it, high were the ceilings in the in the room that you were uh, in? Uh, fairly high, not massively high. Well, how high? Uh, if you think of me plus a chair, about that high. <laughs> That's a very really low ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give up! No, it is really? Really? Yes, sir. Cheap I, I am six foot. All if right, I'm going, all right. I'm just We've saying, I'm six foot and it's great. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> how, how did Ben react when you were making these noises? Well, did, did it spook him? Yeah. He ran straight out through the door, which would have meant running through where the ghost was. Oh, oh I so see. he probably right. panicked. Oh, God, absolutely terrified. Did it? Yeah. Well, he, I know that about it, Ben. He does get very, very <laughs> spooked. <laughs> Anything like that freaks I mean, him right out. Thank goodness he could open the lock on that door, yes. you know. <laughs> when did he no find word. out that, that it had all been a, a wheeze? I told him about ten years later. Ten, ten years? years? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. You've let him live with this trauma for ten years? No. Look at it this way, and I explained it to him like this at the time, cos he was quite cross, cos you would be. <laughs> and I said, no, listen, you've dined out on that story. I know oh, you. You'd have told yeah. people at dinner parties, oh, yeah. no, the most like, haunted house. Like people world. saying Nelson Mandela once rang me yeah. out. <laughs> Uh, David, remind us again, please. Uh, this is Ben, and he took me to my first ever football match, and then okay. was disappointed when I dozed off for a bit in the in the second half. When was this? This was last season. Oh, he's already got all the I've words, got, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> he has been training for this one. I've got last season. Yeah. What, what was the match? Uh, it was uh, association football. <laughs> And it was uh, between Tottenham Hotspur yeah. and Hull. And who won? Uh, Tottenham Hotspur. How do you know? <laughs> I went to it. <laughs> <laughs> and where, where was it played? In Tottenham or at Hull? In Tottenham. Do you and remember the name of the ground? Uh, what if I could? Would, would that make this definitely true? Um, I'm not willing to say how I feel about that. Okay. Until you say it. I'm not willing to say how I feel about anything, but that's just because I'm <laughs> British. <laughs> Yes, it was, at, it was at White Hart Lane. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I do have a research team. <laughs> do you remember the colour of the kits? Let's say one team was in white Ooh. and the other team wasn't. <laughs> What colour was the goalkeeper wearing? Green. All over, with a little tricorn hat. <laughs> as, as I recall. 
so what, how do you know Ben? He, uh, he was at school with me. OK, and uh, if you don't like football, why would you have gone? Um, I, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to... Uh, um, no, I was about to say, I like to experience new things. No, I don't. <laughs> but occasionally I get bullied into experiencing new things under peer pressure. He said, you're always slagging off football. Why don't you come along and the atmosphere will be great, you might quite like it, and then maybe, just maybe, you'll shut up for a bit. <laughs> who, are you, who are you there to support? Uh, well, vaguely. He's a, uh, he's a Spurs fan. That's the shortening. Nice. <laughs> and so I, was, I was broadly, you know, hoping his team would win. Do you remember the score? I think there was one goal. Well, to the which... Tottenham Hotspurs? Exactly, and it was on the basis of that that the victory was declared to be theirs. <laughs> you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need an answer. So, Lee's team is Ben, Richard's frightened friend, Sean's Portaloo pal, or David's matchday mate? <laughs> I don't see Sean chatting to somebody trapped in a Portaloo. He doesn't strike me no. without laughing. Like yeah, it's true, isn't it? That is a very good point. I've known Sean long enough to know. He would be going, oh, come on, everyone, let's push it over. <laughs> Richard, Richard and the roof is where he lost me. The just the height. Yeah, That's the height. The... It's too high. For you. <laughs> no, just also like to, to exert enough force to hear it through the roof with your like you maybe you would have barely touched them, but then your height. <laughs> when we look, no, no. <laughs> I think they're saying that in a stately home, any person, however tall, plus a stool, they're they're doubted. It's not just that you. Oh no, 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 it's no, just no, 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 just him. <laughs> He said that like he was a Spanish ambassador and he was worried about being insulted. <laughs> yeah. I think, Ambassador, yeah. it's any person. It's nothing to do with your height, sir. No, not Richard. What about David in the football? Well, I, it's, it is possible that he, he would have a friend, I suppose. <laughs> so what are you going to say? I suppose we're left with David, are we? Yeah. OK. You think it's David? Right, Ben. Would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Ben, and Richard spooked me by pretending to be a ghost <laughs> in a country house. <laughs> really sorry, mate. Really sorry, mate. Thank you very much, Ben. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <clears throat> it's Lee. One Saturday morning, I lay on my back in the garden and pretended I'd fallen off a ladder so that I could get out of a family trip to Ikea. David <laughs> <laughs> Steve. What, what, what had you been supposedly doing on the ladder to fall I, off it? So, my wife said we're going to Ikea and then you should be upset if I said no, so I said, yeah, no problems. Can we go in about an hour? She went, yeah, no problems, why? And I said, because I've got to do something in the garden. Yeah, what what, what, what right, did were you, you doing? Say? Trimming the tree. You, so you said, OK, we can go to Ikea in an hour, I've yeah. just got to go and trim the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I'm going to trim the tree, obviously. I said, I've just got something to do in the garden. Why is it so urgent that this tree needed to be trimmed? You're not following this story, are you, Sean? <laughs> I didn't need to trim the tree. Yeah, 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 but surely wouldn't she go, we'll do it later? Because it was a casual conversation. We're going to Ikea. Can we go in about an hour? I've just got to do something in the garden. She went, yeah, fine. And that was it. Right. We don't live in a relationship where I go, can we go to Ikea? I go, can we go now? I'm doing something in the garden. She doesn't sit me down, put a spotlight on me. <laughs> and go, just a sing in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> OK. But you did talk very last week. <laughs> so she... she <laughs> you say you've got to do something in the garden. She says, fine. So you walk out into the garden. Yes. Go Explain to the shed. how you set the scene. I go to the shed, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I pick my tool wisely. Because I want to, I want to make sure that when I when I've fallen with it, that yeah. it looks dramatic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So what did you Pet pick? A second, sir, there's nothing. Those big giant ones. Do you know which one I mean? They look like those old-fashioned bull workers with a pair of scissors at the end. Yeah. The telescopic handles. That's one. I still needed a ladder. They're not going to get me on that. Did you climb to the top of this ladder? Uh, well, you actually... I don't need to, do I? There's no nope. trimming what? to so no... be done. I mean, are you yeah, fucking? Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? Are you <laughs> fucking? There's no. I'm not. So... I'm not Robert De Niro. I'm not Method. I didn't have to go. <laughs> I must become the tree trimmer. 
<laughs> your wife must think you're pretty bad at it if you can go out and presumably instantly fall I off the ladder. I didn't say I fell off instantly. I know she's going off to do something well, else. She notice. says, I'm going to the shops then. So I know she's out, so I position so everything. She, she says, in advance of going to this shop, she is going to the shop. <laughs> no. It's an expression that people say, I'm just popping to the shops. I pop into the individual shop. No, it's not shop. an expression. It means going to the shop. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, it's a euphemism in your house for what? <laughs> Having a poo. <laughs> I pop into the shop. Oh, okay. You can get me on one letter, or I pop into the shop. <laughs> she said she was popping to the shop now. Shop singular in advance of your trip to the shop. She I'm might not... have said shop. It's one letter. Give me a break. It's series nine. <laughs> she may have said shop. Can I ask or shop. I'm just popping out. In fact, she said out. I'm popping out. She's popping. She was out. popping out. So. <laughs> OK, so she has left the house. She's left the house. So She's you gone know to you've got... Yeah. <laughs> to, buy, to buy a curly whirly or curly whirlies, I'm not sure. <laughs> She's gone out. I know she's going to be gone enough time for me to get a ladder, lie it on its side, do the second turn and lie there in the position that I would describe as... Can I ask a this question? Why didn't you want to go to Ikea? <laughs> <laughs> I think I go to Ikea to get out of trimming a tree. <laughs> I didn't need to trim the tree! <laughs> so your wife comes back from the shop before going to the shop, yeah. for whatever reason. And we find that, weirdly, that the, the different shops sell different things. Okay. So I have tried the old one. She goes, I'm just going to buy, buy some potatoes. I've gone, well, why don't we wait till we're in Ikea? And she said, no, you can't buy. It turns out that different shops sell different things. <laughs> So your wife comes back from the potato shop to No, it's find not called the potato shop. You've finished trimming the tree and yeah. fallen off a ladder. Yes. How much of the tree did you get done? <laughs> <laughs> did you claim specific injuries that you'd done? When you yes. said, oh, I've just generally hurt us what? What had you done? What I did went, you say it hurt? I went, ah! My leg! She went, what's up with it? I said, I don't know, but I can't go to Ikea. <laughs> And I claim to have injured my coccyx. <laughs> How long had she been gone? <laughs> it was probably four or five days this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say probably about ooh, 15 to 20 minutes. Did she still go to Ikea? Yeah, no, what did, yes, what did she do then? You, you're she, there she, in she, agony. She came to help me. She helped you up. She helped me up. She, she tried to get me stood up. I, I held the base of my back. Is that with the coccyx in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I held the base of my back. Uh -uh. Yeah. And uh, she, she said, you better come inside and sit yourself down. I said, but what about the trip to Ikea? I feel I've let you down. She said, no, that was years ago. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think the bit where I was pushing it, when I shouted, love, can you, you pull that ladder away? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't need to, to go rusty. I don't, I don't want it to go rusty. I might need that in a couple of weeks when we go to Boots. <laughs> So what do you think, David? Is this true? Um, what do you think? I think it's a lie. I just think you'd it's save that for something a bit more... You think it's a waste? Bit more, well, yeah. yeah, it's a waste of uh, an opportunity to get out of something. <laughs> I love like the a, fact like that a family dad's... Christmas, you could get out of a whole Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? <laughs> I, think, I think we think it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Lee, truth or lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lie. Lee didn't pretend he'd fallen off a ladder to get out of a family trip to Ikea. Next. <coughs> it's Trevor. I used to be in a South African boy band, but we split up after three of us were kicked by a horse on a video shoot. <laughs> David's team. Why was there a horse in the video? Because that's what you do in, like, boy band videos. You have a horse. Sing to a horse. <laughs> well, you don't sing to the horse. The horse is there. Is Why a horse? Because, ladies, look at me. I'm on a horse. <laughs> you were you on the horse. No, but that's the... Like, you, you weren't on the horse. We you were next to the horse. We couldn't all get on the horse because there's four Who, of us. Were any of you on the horse? You had four. No. You had one horse between four of you. <laughs> what was the song? <laughs> what was the song? Yeah. I Love You, Baby. And the song was called I Love You, Baby. <laughs> yes. Well, they're the lyrics. We know, I love you, the, baby. Well, it's a Klasa song, Klasa and Zulu, so, I mean, it's called I Love You, Baby. That's the translation into English. Right. Give, us a, give us a taste of it. How does, how does it go? <laughs> what, the song? Yes, yeah. the song. You want me to sing it? On... Yes, I want yeah, you yeah. to sing it. Well, I'll sing my part. I can't we... sing the whole... The oh, whole well, thing. Imagine now, I, I'm the horse, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. Ready? <laughs> Sing to the horse. Sing to the horse. <laughs> Do 
Tanda, baby. Giyagutanda. This wasn't a big band, was it? Big, this is my part. I'm it's singing my lovely. part. Giyagutanda. Tanda, sa, mingi, funa, wena, pen. Giyagutanda, ye, ni, tanda, wena. We all know it. <laughs> So that, that's definitely a song. Do you yeah. know what they call that sort of music? <coughs> Clip clock. Well, can I ask? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. What are you called? What boy was band. the boy band called? Yeah. yeah. This is weird because, like, now I have to translate everything into English. That's handy. So it would help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, because it was Sparks Boys. So then, <laughs> but then in English it means Sparks Boys. Sparks Boys. Sparks yes. Boys. I'm no, I'm no wonder it took so long to translate that. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what prompted, what when, when provoked the exactly, horse to actually exactly kick? Right. How, how did, why did that happen? Well, we don't, yeah. we don't know. Everyone was standing together, and then you're singing... Everyone's facing the camera while you're singing. Yeah. And then, out of nowhere, it's just a kick. Wow. And then... But it got three band members. <laughs> what were the injuries? Well, the one guy, uh, Dumelo, he got kicked the hardest, so yeah. he was really hurt. So I don't know if he fractured his arm or if he broke right. something. Oh, he, wanted, then... oh, he was going to Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, love, I've joined a boy band that I got kicked by off. <laughs> Can't make it today. Well, no, says, why is it the end of the group, just one horse accident? It's not like a horse, there was a stampede and you got killed by yeah. a load of horses. <laughs> and they go, and there's just, like, Gary Barlow's head rolling across... <laughs> And you go, I think that's it, that's it. I think there's no more comebacks from this. I mean, from the horse's point of view, the horse was destined for great things. He'd started to appear in pop videos. Yeah. <laughs> it's a disaster anyway. you well, look like at you it. say, you get, yeah. start getting a reputation for, you know, lashing out in a professional context, it can be the end. <laughs> What are you going to say, David? Uh, it's very convincing. I, I say it's true. I'd go true. I'm, I'm going to go, yeah. I'm gonna you think true? Yeah. I, I think it might be true. Let's, let's say true. Let's say true. OK, Trevor, truth or lie? Lie. <laughs> and that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that David's team have won by four points to one. But, of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Trevor Noah. <laughs> yes, it's Trevor Noah. He's dished out more whoppers than a teenager in Burger King. Good night. <laughs> David Mitchell with four comedians trying to smuggle the truth past their opponents. Listen to Radio 4's panel show The Unbelievable Truth online. On X on BBC One, an aristocratic beauty accused of murder... Reed can't wait to get started on Ripper Street. Hello from BBC Two now, Joe Brand serves up an extra slice of bake-off.